Passive income is the power that allows you to make really good money and stabilize your income as an independent creator. So today we're gonna to talk about three different dimensions of passive income. What it is, what it isn't, and how you can start building it right now, as in today. And be sure after you watch this, to check out our playlist. It's available for free in the link below and I'll give you way more detail than this primer. Enjoy. So passive income, my and, and Jeanette's definition of that is doing something once, doing something once and getting revenue from it basically forever. Doing something once and getting revenue from it forever, as long as it's in existence. And obviously as long as there's demand for whatever work, product, service that you're creating. That's passive income. Now you might need to polish it off a little bit, you might need to update it and so forth, but it's something where it's pretty much plug and play, as we would say back in the day in the technology circles. It's plug and play, setting to forget it. It's not meant to be an active thing. It's meant to be passive. Right now I have passive income coming to me from almost 50 different sources, about four dozen between my books, uh, this YouTube channel, um, the work I do with Ink Magazine at inkdamerbrown.com, all those things and more bring me passive income. That could be a couple pennies, no exaggeration, could be a couple hundred dollars, but that's coming every single month. Over time that adds up and as I get into my catalog, my latest book, Built From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance and Nourish the World, going all the way back to um, my first major business book, which you all made a bestseller, The Ultimate Bites as Entrepreneur. All those things are creating passive income. So let's broaden it out a little bit. I think there's three things to keep in mind with passive income. This can go along really well with how to create passive income, which is a recent video that I did. I'll be sure and throw the link up. And in fact, I'll throw the image up there so you guys can go straight to it. And of course, you can go to the playlist and get all the passive income info. The first thing is, number one, you create once and you get paid multiple times. However your method of doing that really varies on what you're doing. Um, the one-on-one -on -one work that I do as a coach, my books and so forth, is geared towards, mostly towards creatives, but it can apply to anything. So mine happens to be a book. Let's talk about um, the passive writer will be a good example, a meta example. Um, Jeanette and I did um, a major uh, speaking engagement over at the American Society for Journalists and Authors, ASJ.org. Shout out to them, they're a great organization. We spoke at their conference in 2018. The talk ended up being standing room only. So there were other talks at the same time, so we had most of the audience at that time. Jeanette and I looked at each other and said, so that was one, one, one event. And we said, maybe this could work as a book. So I'd already started my publishing imprint. I was already doing my independent publishing. I have my imprint called Bring Your Word. So within about two months, we ended up writing this book. It came out July 4th of 2018. So we're hitting an anniversary of it. And so then we're getting paid from this. So that's two. So the original speaking event, this. Then we end up doing a Kindle version of it or a digital version of it, three. Then we're actually doing an audiobook version of it which will be available by the time you listen to this. Four, right? And then we've done other things with that. You create once, and then you develop other products, services, or even that thing that you created in the first place becomes the thing. I even might have an audio from the original keynote that I think I included in one of my audiobooks that I did. So five, <laughs> we can keep going. There's so many eight ways that you can split things up. I have a video that talks about uh, Martha Stewart and Beyonce and other folks, and I'll be sure and throw the link up. Be sure and check that out. I believe it's how Beyonce makes money off of money. This is that whole concept. You create something once, you get revenue, passive income from it forever, or as long as you like, or as long as there are interests from the communities that you serve. That could be a course on Teachable. I have a, a course at painlancing.teachable.com that's best on best on, based on the bestseller, the Ultimate Bites of the Entrepreneur. You can check it out, out over there. It's been active for like four or five years. I update it about once a year. It's bringing me revenue. That's a beautiful thing. Number two, you wanna use what you've got. I have this concept called the cunning room floor. And so I think of like, uh, I don't think they do this anymore because it's all digital, but I think about the old school movies, the editors, because you know, the, the director will film the movie and then it has to go to editing. And then there's an editor, old school at least, 
who would be in like the dark room going through each slice and they might work with the director a little bit, but at the end of the day, the editor is gonna make some of those decisions, at least at least on the offset, and they'll have to figure out what's gonna keep. But if you think about something like the movie Jaws, you know, the movie's like an hour and a half long. I'm sure Steven Spielberg filmed hundreds, hundreds of hours. That's why we have the concept called the director's cut, because the editor will work on it, and then the director years later will say, well, I wanted to add this scene and that scene, Right, you think of the Zack Snyder cut of um, of the Justice Justice League movies, which has been like at least at least on social media has been such a contentious discussion for like years because the Zack Snyder cut, who was the director of of uh, at least two of these movies, never got seen. Right, but then there's a special cut that was done by Warner Brothers, the studio, and it's evidently completely different. That's why we have director's cuts, right? But what if there was never a director's cut? What if this stuff was just on the cutting room floor? The same thing happens with what we create. As uh, creatives doing books, making music, or having a seminar and we have all this dialogue, but then we cut it down like a podcast or something. We cut it down to like a half an hour thing. But I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews. So I've interviewed uh, Adam Grant, Cal Newport, um, a lot of this stuff is available on this YouTube channel at youtube.com slash browndamon or on my ink column at inkdamonbrown.com. Um, and I've interviewed these folks and half the time I'll have this half an hour great interview with them and they only use five minutes because my ink column is only 500 words. You know, because um, this video only allows, you know, 10 minutes, whatever the case may be. What happens to all that extra stuff? That bonus content can become what creates your passive income. That stuff is just laying there. We found this a lot in the journalism world. We still do because we'll get an assignment to do a 400 word piece. Not that much, 400 words is short. And we'll end up interviewing 20 people, not exaggerating. Not all of it's gonna get in there. What do we do with the leftovers? We talk about that a lot, again, in the passive writer specific to, to journalists and authors, but that also applies to any type of creatives. What are you doing with your excess stuff? Or three, what are people always asking you for? If you're familiar with my work, you know some of my story. I did um, two startups. The second one was called Cuddler. Uh, we ended up getting very popular and we ended up selling the startup about a year after we started. At the same time that I was co-founder of the startup and bootstrapping it, again, we did it with our own money. Then I was also the primary caregiver of, at the time, our toddler from when he was four months old to when he was about two. When he was around two, that's when I sold the second startup. That journey in itself, I never thought about that. I thought about what my next startup was going to be. I thought about what my next book was going to be. But people kept asking, not about the startup, but how the hell I did it, right? How did you manage to be the primary caregiver of a toddler and have the number one app in America? How'd you get on the cover of the Wall Street Journal and change all these dirty diapers? How does that work? And it took me about a year <laughs> to realize what people are really asking. They wanted to apply my tools to their life. That's passive income because it took me nothing to talk about, just like I'm talking with y'all. It took me nothing to talk about. It's like, oh yeah, well I would do this and I would negotiate this. Again, my wife's in the medical profession, so she has a traditional job. So I'm like, I would negotiate this with her and I would structure my life this way, and I would do this with my son. When my second son came, that's how I juggled it, and understanding the startup life and all that stuff. I could talk about that forever because that's part of the life I lived. That's what people were asking me for. Your passive income should not be stressful. This is important. Your passive income should not be stressful. Not should, should not be something we have to sit there in the corner for days at a time and say, how am I gonna create passive income? I need to learn this new thing because it's a passive income thing. It shouldn't be on that level, at least when you start. Now, if you want to expand it to other passive incomes, like me <laughs> learning how to do a YouTube channel, fine. But when you're starting off your first passive income streams, it should be based on the knowledge that you know. And even in a meta way, me talking to y'all, I've done dozens of keynotes. I've done four TED Talks. I did my fourth TED Talk right before I started this YouTube channel. So even this being a stretch for me, it's more the technology, it's more the formatting, it's more talking to a camera in this way. It's not about public speaking. 
Imagine how stressful and intense it would be if I was never a public speaker and suddenly I wanted to have a YouTube channel. So shout out to those who are doing that grind. I didn't have to do that because I'm used to talking to people. I'm used to getting my message into a 10 or 15 minute conversation. The four rules or four practices that will help you build good passive income. Now, I have a whole playlist talking about passive income and how we can create things and not have to work as hard and the idea of trading time for money, which we'll get into. But I think it's also important to set up guidelines as far as what passive income is and what it isn't. So some of y'all are asking, I wanna go ahead and break it down for you really quickly. Again, four basic ideas. My name is Damon Brown, DamonBrown.net. You're watching the Bring Your Worst show. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. If you like what you're hearing or you're into this kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe and share it with other people that you think might need to hear it. The number one rule when it comes to passive income is that it is not, it is not time traded for money. It's not time traded for money. If you have an hourly job, then you're making $5 an hour. You work for four hours, you're making 20 bucks. If you have a salary position and it's every other Friday you get paid, you get that prorated annual salary for those two weeks that you worked. Really straightforward, really simple. This is the traditional practice that we grew up with. Passive income is not like that. You can create something once and then get paid a little bit or get paid forever. That's what makes it so beautiful. In fact, I have one book in mind that I worked on several years ago. I spent a week working on it and I put in a couple hundred dollars to get the book done. That book was did well enough for me to pay my rent at the time in San Francisco. Obviously it was not an hourly rate and obviously it wasn't salaried. It was something I created and I created passive income for years to come. I'm still making money based on that project. If we're going to get to the next level, if you want to get to the next level financially, you gotta get out of that loop of time being traded for money because we can't make more time. I talk about that in my book, Built From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance and Nourish the World. It's actually a quiz you can take to understand the, the finite resources that we all have. So over at builtfromnowquiz.com, I'll put the link below. But what we're working with, whether it's our focus, our agility, our time, and our energy, the things we talk about in Built From Now, we can't make more of that. That's not how it works. There's only 24 hours in a day, particularly if you're like myself. I have two little boys I'm taking care of. I have my partner, my wife that I'm working with. Like, like there's so much stuff going on, I can't make more time. But what I can do is maximize my time in creating something that's going to pay me forever. The number two rule when it comes to passive income is that it can continue in some form without you. Without you, it just keeps going. As I'm speaking to you, I have about uh, 50 or so passive income streams. And so those things are continuing to sell, whether I'm talking with you and doing the show, I'm spending time with my kids, I'm on the road, I'm resting, I'm sleeping. I did a book a, a few years ago with Jeanette Hurd called The Passive Writer, Five Ways to Make Money in Your Sleep. It's focused obviously on writing, but it talks about a lot of these principles as far as making money as you sleep. The key thing here is that it continues in some form without you. So if you're doing something else, if you have your day job, which is maybe the main thing that's paying the bills for you, even frankly, when you pass away, those things that you create, if they're true passive income streams, will continue. If I were to go right now, <laughs> and I don't mean metaphorically, my books will continue to sell and those royalties will go into my trust as well as to my family. That's passive income. It's way more passive than having a regular day job that gives me an hourly or an annual salary rate. Because once I'm gone, that salary is done. Number three, passive income requires an upfront investment. Passive income requires an upfront investment. If someone says it does not, do not believe them and run. That upfront investment could be your time. We call it sweat equity, right? Where you're working on something, you're building something, and then you hope that it gives you some type of return on, on investment or ROI later. That's part of the risk. That's why a lot of people don't mess with passive income because they want the guaranteed hourly rate or, or annual salary, which is okay. I'm not mad at them for that. But if you want to get out of this situation or area that you're in and elevate to the next level, particularly financially, you're going to have to put something up front. 
That upfront could be time. That upfront could be uh, other resources like money. For instance, to get meta for a second, when I started this show a couple years ago, I was pretty much on my own and I didn't have any backing. I'm like, this is the direction that my audience, you, wants me to go in, so I'm gonna rock with it, particularly when the pandemic was first starting off and all of us were sheltering into place. For me to do this show, it required me doing a lot of research as far as other people who were doing the video series, me connecting and having phone calls with people who had had successful podcasts, but also the financial investment of having the lights, the mic down here, uh, make sure my computer was up for uh, getting sure, making sure that, uh, <laughs> you know, that my art was correct. Shout out to, to James and shout out to John. That required financial investment. I actually did a video recently, a live series. I do a live show every Wednesday. And I talked about how I was able to do the, all the inside baseball to get this show up and running. And it ran around $300. So I'll be sure and put a link up there and check that video out as well if you're looking or interested in inside baseball as far as how I got this off the ground and now just hitting about 250 episodes. The point is, is that if you're gonna do passive income, it requires some type of investment up front. It's not gonna be free. It's not, that's not how it works. But then that leads to number four, which is as far as the results of passive income, there is no cap to it, no cap. In other words, you can create something and it's, it takes maybe a couple days, maybe a couple weeks for you to make it. And then it could give you $10, it could give you $100 and give you thousands of dollars. As I mentioned before, there are projects that I worked on and they're helping pay the mortgage now. And they were done years, decades ago. And they're still bringing in royalties, a, AKA passive income. So there's no cap to what you can do. The challenge with trading time for money is that there's an automatic cap. Not just based on what you negotiate, but literally how much time do you have in the day? You can put in that overtime, but if you're doing 12 hour days, it's not like you can do 16. You probably shouldn't do 24 hour days <laughs> of working, right? And if you go too far, you end up burning yourself out. Passive income is an avenue for you to build more wealth without burning yourself out. There's absolutely risk involved. That's why I wanna go over these four, these four pointers. The key thing is, is understand how much risk you can handle, and to understand that the benefits, with no cap, the benefits are way higher. The fifth point goes way deeper than this. If you wanna find out where your best resources are and what your next move should be as far as with passive income, as far as getting your hands dirty, because you actually need to figure out what your passive income is gonna be. There are three big questions you wanna ask yourself before you really get into a passive income stream. Number one thing is, do people actually want this? You have to test it. Do people actually want this? It's a simple question, but we tend to forget it because we get excited about whatever product or idea or service we're trying to do, and then we don't think about what's the actual audience want. There's many different ways to do this. One of the best ways to do this is actually the long game where you build community before you create a passive income stream. I have my email newsletter at joindamon.me. I've had it for several years. Every Wednesday at 5 to 5 a.m., people get delivery. It's a free free newsletter where I talk about stuff that I talk about on this channel. So entrepreneurship, solopreneurship, emotional intelligence, and so forth. And I have lots of folks that are subscribed to it. If I have a particular thing that I'm trying to do, then I can touch base with them. I can test market it. I can say, hey, I'm looking at doing this new book. Hey, I'm gonna write about this particular topic. And it gives me some type of insight as far as what my audience wants. So many of us do things in a vacuum and we work on it and then we bring it up and we say, hey, it's gonna be awesome. And then no one's there. It reminds me a lot of Chris Gellenbaugh who uh, has a book called Side Hustle, really good book came out around the same time as my book, The Ultimate Bite Says Entrepreneur. So, and that's since we're kind of twins. I really love his work and I respect him as a person. What he talks about, selling first, and then you create and then you ship. Traditionally, we create, we sell, and then we ship. So we make the whole thing first, and then we tell people about it, and then we hope they buy it. He's actually talking about a different different track. You, you sell whatever it is. I'm going to do this online course where I'm talking about such and such. Are you down? Are you guys interested? 
That's why join day might not mean my newsletter is so powerful. That's why on a lesser extent, social media is so powerful because you can connect with these audiences, your community and say, hey, do y'all want this? You set up a sign up page, people start pre-ordering. They might even start paying you ahead of time. And then you use those resources and that insight to build it from now. If you do that, then you don't have to worry about selling it later. And you actually know if they want this. Number two, how hard can this be to pull off? There might be a great idea that you have. I have lots of ideas, but I have two little kids, you know, grade school kids at this point, who I'm the primary caregiver to. I'm writing my books. I'm spending time with y'all on this channel. Um, I'm doing my consulting at damonbrown.net, so I do one-on-one -on -one consulting. I'm doing TED Talks. It's a busy time. So I might not be able to pull off all these different ideas and side hustles that I wanna do. But if I go to that evaluation, I can actually figure out what I can do. I talk about that a little bit in my new book, Build From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World, where I talk about the four resources we all have. You can go to buildfromnowquiz.com to take a quiz for free. It takes two minutes to learn more about your particular thing. But I talk about that in the book where you have to know what resources that you have. Based on those resources, you take action. Again, just like the first point as far as do people actually want this, we tend to say, I want to make this happen. And then we say, okay, how are we gonna make it happen? As opposed to saying, I have these resources. And then, you know, and then saying, okay, I can actually do this realistically. That's why I'm able to be so productive and create so much, even though my time and my other resources I talk about and build from now are extremely strapped. So there's power in that. But you have to know exactly what resources that you're working with. You have to start with that. Again, the buildfromnowquiz.com is a good place to start with that. So number one, you have to figure out if people actually want this. Start with that. If people don't want it, then if it's gonna be passive income, it's gonna be really hard because no one's gonna be giving you passive income, particularly in the later months or years after you do the publicity for it. Number two, how hard is it gonna to be to pull off? There's an idea that you have a side hustle, solopreneurship or what have you, my specialty. If you have something you wanna do, this might not be the time for it. But if it's something that works within your resources, then go for it. Finally, what would be required to get this to the right people? Like you might know that people want it. Cool, right? And you might know you can pull it off. But if you can't get it, literally get it to the people, then it doesn't really matter. If I wanted to do a startup that was related to the National Plumbers Association, I don't know if they exist, but the National Plumbers Association, that would be very difficult for me. Now I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but I have no connection to plumbers. I don't know any plumbers, right? Aside from the folks that have come to my house a few times, I don't know any plumbers. I have no plugs in there. I don't know what plumbers need. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't even be able to, barely be able to do an ins uh, insightful startup about it because I wouldn't know how to help them to be better plumbers because I know nothing about plumbing. So this learning curve is going to be extremely steep. If you're trying to create a passive income stream, one of the best places to start is the stuff you already know. My passive incomes include uh, this channel, <laughs> which is obviously stuff that I know. Um, it is my uh, teaching program, so my classes for doing your, your own startups and side hustles at paylancing.teachable.com. I've had that for several years now. Since the original Bites as Entrepreneur came out and became a bestseller, and I'm doing a, a class on there that I regularly update. So I have that. I have a column at, ink, ink, at inkdamonbrown.com for Ink Magazine. That's giving me passive income every time y'all come to read it. I've been doing that for almost six years. The passive incomes I, I, I have, including my books, my new one built from now, they're all around things that I know. I'm not going out there and saying, I'm gonna create a passive income stream. I'm gonna do a side hustle. And it has nothing to do with my knowledge base. I've done two startups. Both of them were done while I was primary caregiver of my two kids. Doing that, the second one got popular enough. It's called Cuddler, C-U-D-D-L-R. It got popular enough to have a quarter million users. We end up selling it less than a year after we launched. We bootstrapped the whole thing. I've done best-selling books about it. I've done ink columns about it. I'm a, I'm a coach. Everything I talk about on this show, which is one of my passive income streams, if you want to get meta about it, all that's based on my knowledge base because that's my journey. Again, you don't hear me talking about plumbing. Much respect to the plumbers out there and, and you know to the other folks that are doing that kind of stuff, but that's not my, my area. Passive income, as we talk about in um, the Passive Writer, it's available everywhere. Jeanette and I talk about passive income as it is should not be ridiculously hard work. Even if it's something like a book, your book should be something that's close to the stuff that you know. And then that becomes the foundation for future passive income. I'm, I'm 
just did my 25th book with the Build From Now. And these are all based on the knowledge that I have. But more importantly, after doing 25 books, those royalties, like I said, are going back years now. But that took time. That will be the, the last insight in regards to passive income is that it's gonna take time. If you're trying to rush to create passive income, that's gonna make it harder. So take your time. What do you already know? And remember the three things. Do people actually want this? How hard will this be to pull off? And lastly, what will be required to get it to the right people? You answer those questions, you make sure that you're straight on it, and then you're on your way to creating a really good passive income stream, or in my case, multiple, which I highly recommend because it helps even things out, particularly if you're independent.